Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English. This is Mukesh Soni. Friends, in this video, we shall have a discussion of the important questions from the famous play Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. So here, very first, we shall have a discussion of the two marks questions. And the question number one, we have here, why did the lady agree to buy flowers for the flower girl? Colliding into flower peddler, Eliza Doolittle. Freddy scatters her flowers. After he departs to continue looking for a cab, Eliza convinces Mrs. Ainsford Hill to pay for the damaged flowers. The lady agrees to buy flowers from the flower girl. Question number two. Why does the crowd get upset with the note maker? Because he was noting down the every word of Eliza, the flower girl, and he was mistaken either as a spy or as a Detective. Question number three. What is the profession of the note maker? The note maker, the note maker was a professor of phonetics, the science of speech. Question number four. How did the note taker make a living out of teaching phonetics? He makes his living teaching people to uh, sorry. He makes his living teaching people to speak properly with proper pronunciation. Question number five. What claim did the note maker make with respect to the language? Higgins is an expert. Higgins, who is considered as a note maker, who is an expert in phonetics. And he claims, I can place my men, sorry, I can place any man within six miles. I can place him within two miles in London and sometimes within two streets. That's what he claims. Who were the note taker and the gentleman? The note taker was Professor Higgins and the gentleman was Colonel Pickering. Uh, please correct the spelling. Gentleman, M-A-N. The, so the note maker, Professor Higgins, the gentleman, Colonel Pickering. Why had the flower girl come to meet Mr. Higgins? Because Eliza had come to see Professor Higgins to take lessons from him. So she has come to meet Professor Higgins because she would like to few lessons. She would like to learn lessons from him, especially uh, to speak to speak English in a very fluent and a very accurate manner. Why did Eliza want to learn proper English? Eliza told Pickering that she wants to be a lady in a fashionable flower shop. They won't take her unless she learns to talk good English. What is the bet between Mr. Higgins and Mr. Pickering? Colonel Pickering takes a bet that if Higgins can pass her, the, if Higgins can pass Eliza as a flower girl, if Higgins can pass her off as a duchess as an at the ambassador's party, within six months, he would pay for the entire experiment. So he says that if Higgins can train this lady within six months so the for the forthcoming party that's going to him that's going to be held at ambassador's party within six months and he would pay the entire experiment who is will pay the entire experiment higgins and finally uh, so, sorry sorry the uh, pickering will pay the entire ex entire uh, expenditure so pickering says that if higgins can pass this lady if he, if higgins can train this lady as a duchess for the forthcoming ambassador's party within six months. So Pickering is ready to pay for the entire experiment and Higgins is ready for this experiment, for this um, teaching. Who was Alfred Doolittle? So Alfred Doolittle was Eliza's father. How did Mr. Doolittle know the address of Eliza? He knows the address of Eliza from a taxi driver. Mr. Doolittle knew the address of Eliza from a taxi driver. Why had Mr. Higgins invited Eliza to the house of Mrs. Higgins? It was a test of Eliza. She would talk of weather and everyone's health. So why, why Mr. Higgins invited Eliza to have a test? And there she would speak about weather and everyone's health. Who were the guests at Mr. Mrs. Higgins? 
Professor Higgins, Colonel Pickering, Mrs. and Miss Hill, Mr. Ainsford Hill, that is Freddie, they're all invited, arrived at the party. And lastly, Miss Doolittle also arrived and created a sensation. Question number 14. What were Mrs. Higgins' impression about Eliza? According to Mrs. Higgins, Eliza is not presentable. She looks beautiful, but she gives her identity away when she speaks. Her manners and the words and that she uses are not perfect. Who was Whiskers? Whiskers is the first student of Higgins in Pygmalion. He makes an appearance in the Act 3 of the play and he's also referred to as Nepomuk. He's called Whiskers more as a description because of his large facial hair. Question number 16. What was Nepomuk doing at the reception? Nepomuk is Higgins, one of old students, one of the old students. He knows 32 languages. He's greatly in demand at the international parties as an interpreter. That's the reason that that, that, that was the thing he was doing at the reception. Why did the presence of Nepomuk frighten Mr. Pickering? The presence of Nepomuk, Higgins' best student of phonetics, provides a requisite degree of danger to Eliza's trial. Nepomuk recognizes Higgins and brags about his ability of being able to place any man in Europe by the sole virtue of his pronunciation. This worries Pickering who is afraid that Napamak might detect Eliza's origins and blackmail her, Higgins replies that they must wait to see what happens and concedes that if Napamak exposes Eliza, then he shall lose his bet. Question number 18. Whom does Napamak think Eliza was? Napamak is convinced Eliza must be Hungarian and of noble blood because she speaks English too perfectly and only foreigners who have been taught to speak English can speak it well. Question number 19. Whom had Mr. Higgins written a letter to? Mr. Higgins had written a letter to an American millionaire, Mr. Juan Feller. Mr. Van Mr. Feller, that Alfred Doolittle was the most original moralist in England in those days. Question number 20. Who would Eliza marry and why? Eliza would marry Freddie because she was better off with Freddie, a man who respected her and loved her. She would be able to have some freedom to make her own way in the world. And the last question, what work does Eliza plan to do? She thought she would earn money by teaching phonetics. She would become assistant to, Nep to Nepomuk. But finally, both Eliza and Freddie opened a flower shop near Victoria and Albert Museum. So this is how I have tried to solve the two marks questions. Hello friends, let's have a discussion of five marks questions from the famous play Pygmalion by George Banarsha. And the five marks questions answers you are supposed to write in a paragraph. Let's begin it. The question number one. Describe the flower girl. Banarsha describes the flower girl Eliza as generally dirty with her hair in need of washing and her teeth in need of a dentist. She wears a suit covered hat shoddy and coarse clothing and boots that are much the worse for wear. All these items mark Eliza as a member of the lower class. Cleanliness, well cared for teeth, decent clothes cost money, not readily, not readily available to the poor. More than clothes or cleanliness, however, Eliza's cockney accent and unschooled vocabulary mark her as a lower class as Higgins asserts that 
it's a curb stone english that will keep her in the gutter to the end of her to the end of her days question number 2 how does a note maker display his passion and respect for the english language the play begins at the portico of st paul's church in london at 11:15 pm it's raining and so many pedestrians have taken shelter in the pet in the portico there is one lady and her daughter and a daughter in evening dress there is there is one lady and a daughter in the evening dress one man is sitting with his back to the rest wholly preoccupied completely preoccupied in writing in a notebook an amiable military gentleman now comes in to take shelter there from the rain the flower girl eliza addresses him as a captain and appeals to him to purchase a flower he has no change and gives her 3 pence a bystander advises her to give a flower to the military gentleman for his 3 pence because there was a person sitting there who was noting down every word that she was saying eliza gets frightened the crowd say that the man who is taking notes is a detective members of the crowd warn the girl against taking the money because there is a man behind that behind her taking notes of everything she says when the flower girl eliza loudly proclaims that i'm a good girl i am the bystander begin to protest the bystanders they begin to protest the note taker it turns out the no it turns out the note taker is a professor higgins an expert in phonetics his hobby is identifying everyone's accent and place of birth he even maintains that he could take his he could take this rag muffin of a flower girl and teach her to talk like a duchess in 3 months question number 3 why was the note taker offended by the language of the flower girl one bystander points out the note taker's boots as proof that he is not an informer the note taker responds to his comments by asking him now his family is doing in selsley in in selsey the bystander is surprised and asks how the note taker knows his family is from selsey the note taker refuses to demystify his knowledge instead he asks the flower girl how she has come so far east as she was born in listen grow she's up she's appalled and in tears the note taker tells her to be quiet skeptical bystanders challenge the note taker to tell them where they are from and with which opportunity with each opportunity he more shockingly demonstrates his mysterious skill meanwhile the flower girl pouts and insists that she's a good girl and the note maker is not a gentleman the rain stops and the crowd begins to dissipate the note taker offends the daughter and the mother but proceeds to call them a cab however the rain stops and they walk off to catch a bus the gentleman flower girl and note taker they just remain there the gentleman asks the note taker how he does his trick the note taker says that it's simply phonetics which is his profession he claims that he can place a man within 6 miles the gentleman asks if he can make money as a as a phonetician he responds that his clientele consists of those who want to refine their accents in order to move up the social the social ladder and they will pay well for it the flower girl has been muttering continually and the note taker explosively tells her to shut up she insists on a right to sit there the note taker responds a woman who utters such depressing and disgusting sounds has no right to be anywhere no right to live remember that you are a human being with a soul and the divine gift or agriculture oh sorry 
divine gift or articulate speech that your native language is the language of Shakespeare and Milton and the Bible and don't sit there crooning like a bilious pigeon. Question number four. Why was Mrs. Pierce apprehensive, apprehensive about worried about Mr. Higgins teaching Eliza? Mrs. Pierce, Higgins' housekeeper, initially describes Eliza as a very common girl with a dreadful accent and later reference refers to her as a foolish and ignorant. Her attitude towards Eliza is stern and dismissive. However, as plans for the experiment evolve, her attitude softens and she becomes somewhat proactive, sorry, protective. She can see that Higgins is consumed with the idea of teaching Eliza without any thought for the girl or for her future. She begs him to be reasonable and to think. You can't take a girl up like that as if you are picking up a pebble on the beach. Mr. Mrs. Pierce says her last effort to stop the experiment and return Eliza to her parents fails. When Eliza explains I have not I aren't got no parents Mrs. Pierce then attempts to get Higgins to focus on how the girl should be clothed, housed, and cared for. She asks him to consider what is to become of her when you have finished you and when you have finished your teaching, means to say, when you teach her complete English or the English complete English, what will she become? What is to become of her when you have finished your teaching? That's a question Mrs. Pierce asks. Miss, Mr. Higgins. Eventually, she sees she sees that it's best. It's the best if she takes charge as best she can. By the time she has successfully given Eliza bath, she has warned Higgins about his bad language and asked him to curb his bad manners in front of the girl. After cleaning Eliza, Mrs. Pierce comes to Higgins. She tells him that if the girl is to be properly trained, he must not swear in her presence. He must not use the words like damn, what the devil, bloody, etc. And while having breakfast, he should not use his dressing gown as a napkin for wiping his hands. Higgins promises to behave well in her presence. Question number five. What was, what was Eliza's work for the next six months, according to Mr. Higgins? Mr. Higgins says to Eliza, you are to live here for the next six months, learning how to speak beautifully like a lady in a florist shop. If you are good and do whatever you are told, you shall sleep in a proper bedroom and have lots to eat and money to buy chocolates and take rides in taxis. If you're naughty and idle, you will sleep in the back kitchen among the black beetles and be well, be well loaded by Mrs. Pierce with a broomstick. At the end of six months, you shall go to Buckingham Palace in a carriage, beautifully dressed. If the king finds out you are not a lady, will be taken by the police to the Tower of London where your head will be cut off as a warning to other presumptuous flower girls. If you are not found out, you shall have a present of seven and sixpence, sixpence to start life with as a lady in a shop. If you refuse this offer, you will be a most ungrateful and wicked girl and the angels will weep for you. Question number six. What was Mr. Higgins' opinion on women and marriage? In Act 2, Pickering questions Higgins on his intentions toward Eliza. Higgins assures him they are entirely honorable, that he finds women jealous, exacting, suspicious, and a damn nuisance. Women upset everything. Later in Act 3, when Mrs. Higgins voices the hope that 
her son is bringing home a young woman in whom he is romantically interested higgins replies oh i can't be bothered with young women my idea of a lovable woman is someone as like you as possible these statements these statements suggest that he is looking for the perfect woman one who is a match for himself in intelligence and independence and with the strength and refinement of his mother yet this model female will make no demands and change nothing in his life while he himself is far from perfect higgins envisions an ideal for a marriage partner much like the myth the mythic sculptor pygmalion for whom the play is named unable to find his ideal he will remain a bachelor question number 6 how is mrs pierce assessment of mr higgins contradiction to his own assessment or what's the significance of the contrast between higgins claim to be a shy diffident man and mrs pierce assessment of him as overbearing answer is here both the questions can have the same answer higgins is an outward looking man keenly aware of others shortcomings blind to his own he claims his claims follows his claims his claim follows a discussion with mrs pierce in which she points out his need to curb his cursing and other bad habits in front of eliza she brings up she brings up each area needs improvement higgins becomes increasingly agitated denying his faults to the point of yelling he shocked when mrs pierce responds i hope you are not offended mr higgins and then concedes that she is right to bring the matters to his attention moments later he confines to pickering that woman has the most extraordinary ideas about me she is firmly persuaded that i am an arbitrary overbearing bossing kind of person i can't account for it his statement reveals his lack of self knowledge with re- with regard to his nature he has been rude and authoritarian in his treatment of eliza and cross with mrs pierce yet views himself as an amiable sort of man he acts without malice and is very ob- obvious oblivious to the f- effects which accounts for his surprise when the ill effects are mentioned question number 8 write a note question number 8 write a note on the relationship between eliza and mr dolittle dolittle shows no paternal feelings toward eliza suggesting that familial love and responsibility are also luxuries only the rich can afford he and her six sixth he and her sixth stepmother turned her out of the house to earn her own living dolittle has not seen for has not seen her for two months he ex- he ex- he explains to higgins that as a daughter she is not worth a keep describing his relationship with eliza in monetary terms do little's purpose in visiting higgins is to see what money he can get out of eliza's new situation in the house of wimpole street as he says to higgins well what's a 5 pound note to you and what's eliza to me his attitude does not come as a complete surprise earlier mrs pierce tells eliza to go home to her parents eliza's feelings about her parents are clear when she responds i and got i have not got any parents they told me i was big enough to carry my own living and turned me out later encountering her father after bath she guesses correctly that he has not come out of fatherly concern 
but to touch Higgins for the money. After Doolittle leaves with his five pound note, Eliza firmly says in a turn where she sounds in a turn where she sounds like the parent. I don't never I don't want never to see him again. He's a disgrace to me. Question number nine. Why, according to Mr. Doolittle, did he deserve five, pound, five pounds? Alfred Doolittle deliberately asked for the money for the purpose of spending it all and having a grand time over the weekend. He's quite open about this. Saying to Higgins, he says, don't you be afraid that I'll save it and spare it and live idle on it? He seems almost proud of the way that he promises that there that there will not be penny of it left by Monday. He wants the money for one good spree. Thus, it is when Higgins offers him ten pounds, it's Doolittle who says he could not possibly accept it because of the way this is too big a sum and cannot be spent easily. Now, let's note here what he says to justify his refusal to the greater sum of money Doolittle says, 10 pounds is a lot of money. It makes a man feel prudent like, then goodbye to happiness. You give me what I ask you. Governor says, not a penny more, not a penny less. Above all, there's one thing that Doolittle wants to avoid, that is his feeling prudent which he sees as being akin to waving goodbye to happiness, having too much money, having too much money would make him think he would have to save it and that he was unable to spend it on enjoying himself. Five pounds appears to be, appears to be the optimum amount to be easily wasted on a weekend of pleasure. Thus, Alfred Doolittle is happy to accept five pounds because this is the amount that he can most easily spend on a weekend of pleasure. He does not want to feel prudent by having, <coughs> excuse me, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to feel prudent by having too much money. Question number 10. What were Mrs. Higgins concerned with respect to Eliza? Higgins is a professor of phonetics. Eliza is a student. He is cynic towards Eliza. He is indifferent towards her beauty and charm. He loves his subject like anything. Here, his role is that of creator. He transforms a poor flower girl into a beautiful lady. He is using Eliza in his experiment. He wants intellectual satisfaction from her. That's why, after the ambassador's party, Higgins overjoyed on Eliza's success. He boosts on his success. He doesn't think about Eliza's feelings. Eliza expects emotional satisfaction from him. His lessons changed Eliza into a strong, willed woman. Higgins appears a weak, willed person. So these two characters are the two poles apart. Question number 11. How is the superficially of class distinctions based on language brought out in the play? An important lesson that has been learned throughout life and the beginning of the time is to respect the individual's content, not the image. It's shown throughout George Bernard Shah's play Pygmalion that different people can be brought together in the same circumstance, being a heavy rain shower in London, but distance themselves so effusively because of outer appearances. The situation between the non-intellectual flower girl and sophisticated Pickering, Higgins, and the mother-daughter is drawn out over the judgment of a poor speech and her value as a person as she constantly defends herself against their prejudice. Banasha uses Pygmalion to show how language shallowly reflects the importance of social classes within the Victorian era through the portrayal of characters, the conflicts, and the transformation in the first act of the play.
the characters introduced in the beginning of the play prove to illustrate the relationship between social classes and the expectations of each other the character's situation within the story shows its importance in the context and is able to define his or her his or her social standing for example the mother expects others to do things for her showing her societal role as a woman who chooses not to help others you really are very helpless freddy go again don't come back until you have found a cab she is able to show her class authority in a lady like manner while presenting how she believes she should be treated by belittling belittling the value of those who are not respecting that Eliza presents her role as a lower class member of society when she is knocked into by Freddy. So the characters prove themselves through their speech to belong to their appropriate classes. The transformations are seen from the young girl who is still in training alongside her already sophisticated mother, alongside her sophisticated mother, and the the impact. Higgins criticism has had on Eliza so to conclude it establishes that society social classes themselves are superficial and to judge on the content of character will always be more important than imagine on the outer surface so hence we can say that Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion depicts the division of social classes through language Question number twelve: How impressive was was Eliza at the reception? Eliza's first test is at a luncheon given by Mrs. Higgins. Eliza, who is well dressed, makes a remarkable impression on the lunch guest. They are they are totally taken by her, especially by her confidence, demeanor, and articulation. Eliza can only carry a conversation based on the two topics weather and health when these fail her she slips back and appears insecure after being presented in london society at a garden party a dinner party and the reception at buckingham palace eliza succeeds both pickering and higgins agree that oh she was not nervous i knew she would be all right question number 13 why did nepomuk why did nepomuk think eliza was fraud eliza is received by the ambassador and his wife who are struck by the beautiful gravity of her pronunciation as she passes to the drawing room she the hostess instructs nepomuk to find out all about her Eliza's strangely attractive self and magnificent dress and jewels dazzle everybody in the drawing room where the reception is in, is in full swing. Higgins, who has grown quite cynical of the whole affair, joins the group of the host and hostess who are now mingling among the guests. Nepomuk soon joins them too. He announces quite dramatically that Eliza Doolittle is fraud. According to him, Doolittle can't be her real name since it's an English name and Eliza is not English. He reasons that he thinks only foreigners have been taught to speak well. He's convinced that Eliza is Hungarian and of royal blood. Since only royalty can produce that aura of divine right and resoluteness of purpose. When asked for his opinion, Higgins bluntly replies that he thinks that she is on she is an ordinary London picked out of Drury 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 Lane and taught to speak by an expert. However, the others refuse to believe this and agree with Nepomuk that she must be a princess at least, although not necessarily, not necessarily legitimate. Question number 14. What is the result of the letter written to Ezra Wanafella? Higgins wrote a letter to a man named 
Ezra D. Warner Feller saying that Doolittle was the most original moralist in England and the man died and left large part of his wealth for founding an oral reform world league and he left £3,000 per year to Alfred Doolittle on the condition that he should deliver as many as lectures as they can they ask him to deliver up to six times a year. This had made him gentleman. Up till now, he used to ask others for money. Now, others are asking him for money. When he was poor, he had only two or three relatives. Now he has 50. He has to live for others, not for himself. He has become the victim of middle class morality. Eliza must have gone to his house to ask for money and now Higgins will make money from him by teaching him middle class language instead of proper instead of his proper English. Question number 15. According to Mrs. Higgins, what were the mistakes of Mr. Higgins and Mr. Pickering for Eliza or towards Eliza? According to Mrs. Higgins, they should have not given Eliza's name to the police as if she was a thief or lost, have lost an umbrella. They have no more sense than two children. Mrs. Higgins comments that Eliza worked hard and gave an admirable performance at the ambassador's party, but both Higgins, both Higgins and Pickering took the entire credit to themselves and thanked God that it was all over. They should have thanked her, petted her, and told her how splendid she had been. They did nothing of the kind, and so she was naturally annoyed. Question number 17. What changes do we see in Mr. Doolittle's appearance and attitude throughout the play? When Eliza's father, Alfred Doolittle, is introduced in the Act 2, he wears the grubby grab of dustman, that is garage man, sorry, that is garbage man, and identifies himself as a proud member of the undeserving poor. When he appears in the Act 5 at the home of Mr. Sorry, Mrs. Higgins, he wears the top quality clothes of a wealthy gentleman on his way to get married. The physical contrast is clear and Doolittle explains that he has come into money in the amount of £3,000 a year. However, this is as far as his transformation goes. Higgins had brought Doolittle to the attention of the former dustman's benefactor that is an American millionaire. Therefore, Doolittle blames the professor for his new condition, exclaiming, See here, do you see this? You done this. Unlike his daughter, Doolittle does not appreciate the imposed rise in status and has no desire to change who he is to conform to societal standards. As a dustman, he was happy and free. Now he feels forced to he feels forced by his new position to act more respectably to act more respectably and he sees himself as a victim of middle class morality lacking the courage to reject the yearly inheritance he laments happier men than me will call for my dust and touch me for the tip and i look on helpless and envy them Despite his appearance, despite his apparent wealth and status, Doolittle will remain a dustman at the heart. Question number 17. Why does Eliza with Higgins had left where he found her? So the place where he found her and the same place Higgins had left her at the same place in the same position. Why? The experiment is over. Eliza has successfully been passed off as a member of the social elite. However, as Mrs. Higgins predicted in the Act 3, Eliza now finds herself thrust into a new social status with manners and habits 
that disqualify a fine lady from earning her own living now she can't do anything instead of entering a future full of possibilities eliza is facing one in which her options are reduced to marriage in order to achieve financial security she has become a product to sell or a doll to be passed on to new corner we were above that at the corner of the tottenham court road and court i sold flowers she said i i sold flowers i didn't sell myself eliza asserts the morality of the lower class that the upper class does not possess eliza has never lost the sense of respectability that sparked her to proclaim i'm a good girl i am had higgins left her where he found her she at least would not be pressed to compromise this closely had this closely held value question number 18 why did eliza think freddy was a better choice to marry eliza in banarsha's play chose freddy because she could see that he cared for her deeply and would be sure to take care of her that's important because before eliza came to higgins for lessons she was destitute in banarsha's words eliza likes freddy and she likes the colonel and but she does not like higgins or mr dolittle she says that she cannot marry a low common man after seeing the lives of the two cultured men but she would marry freddy as soon as she was able to support him she says freddy loves me that makes him king enough for me she does not want to be treated as an equal as one of the boys the way higgins treats everyone he respects she has no interest in the higher life eliza does want a little kindness the simple love and affection that only and only freddy hill can supply that's why freddy was the right choice for eliza to marry unlike higgins who wants to change the world eliza wants only to change herself unlike higgins who can and does stand apart from the common aspects of life eliza can be content with freddy who simply needs and wants her as a compassionate human being and whereas higgins can get along without anyone eliza and freddy need each other in contrast higgins will continue to try to improve the world but eliza will make a comfortable home for herself and freddy question number 19 comment on the ending of the play george banarsha concludes pygmalion with a define with a defining fight between two main characters that's eliza and higgins eliza firmly stands up to higgins bullying while pondering about what she is going to do with her life higgins continues his usual pessimism and insults while subtly asking eliza to stay with him the act is wrapped up when as eliza departs higgins gives her a shopping list despite her confirmed independence in the previous conversation she sarcastically responds back with an advice on the items of his given list and retorts something along the lines of gi gi what will you do without me and with that leaves she leaves higgins then laughs at eliza's proposal to Fer- to freddy convinced that she will come back crawling to him last question higgins mother of write a short not on mrs higgins or we can say character sketch of mrs higgins higgins mother mrs higgins is an intelligent and independent woman with a high position in society she host the ensford hills at her rich home even though the woman is truly upset with eliza's presence and she is always kind to her she merely knows what it means to be a woman in london 
of those times and she is afraid of the future that waits for eliza even more she does her best to explain to the son that eliza is not an object or his possession and that he must treat her equally to others taking into account her feelings the mother also <clears throat> the mother also truly loves her son although she is truly upset with his manners language behavior from some points of view mrs higgins is a traditional mother figure who cares the most about his son she tries throughout the story to warn the son of the consequences of his actions one more fact that proves that mrs higgins is, is truly a kind and sympathetic person is that eliza listens to her when she wants good advice from an old lady she feels that the lady is sincere with her desire to help and find the support talking with her about their problems so this is how friends i have solved the five marks questions from the play pygmalion written by george bernard shaw hello friends in this video we shall have a discussion of the 10 marks important questions from the play pygmalion by george bernard shaw so you need to answer the following questions in a page or two with reference to the 10 marks questions so the question number 1 discuss eliza's transformation in the play pygmalion or we can also say the same questions in different ways like eliza demonstrates herself as a woman of great character right from the beginning of the play explain or comment on the transformation of eliza from a flower girl to a refined girl or we can also say draw a character sketch of eliza or lisa so the answer begins like this Pygmalion is one of the best plays written by Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw. It is also one of the best plays in the history of English literature. The play is centered on Henry Higgins, a professor of phonetics, who successfully turns a lower-class Cockney girl, Eliza Doolittle, into a well-mannered girl with elevated speech. Eliza Doolittle, a girl who earns her livelihood by selling flour. she comes from a cockney background and speaks a form of cockney dialect which only native londoners can understand a people from london they only can understand those who are basically from london they can easily understand one day while selling flowers at covent garden she meets henry higgins and he makes a bet with colonel pickering a fellow upon a fellow a fellow phonetician that he can train this ignorant cockney speaking girl from the gutter to such an extent that she would pass for a duchess in an aristocratic party something eliza eventually achieved later in the play her transformation from a poor illiterate girl to a fine society lady serves the base of the story in the play by showing this transformation in, in eliza Banarsha ridicules the contemporary higher class society in a subtle fashion and shows that a person coming from Eliza's background can actually excel in higher society if he or she has some inborn talent and is given the opportunity the change in Eliza taking place over the course of the play is both external and internal at the beginning of the play in act 1 we can see a very poor naive ignorant girl who becomes afraid of mr higgins mistakenly assuming him a police officer by his uh, taking notes of her speech but this is more ignorant um, it is more about ignorance caused by her lack of education rather than her foolishness despite her lack of knowledge and proper education we can also see a smart girl out of eliza when she comes to higgins house by car to impress the phonetician the phonetician with the ambition of learning proper english from him so that she can work in a flower shop eliza's outward transformation is first realized by the readers at a small family gathering at mrs higgins house 
Mrs. H- Mrs. Higgins is the mother of Henry Higgins, who, after some initial training of Eliza, who request who request his mother to allow Eliza to come and associate with the guest to see how she is responding to the speech training. Even though Eliza makes some silly mistakes regarding the substances of her speech, she shows a great deal of improvement in pronunciation. However, we can see a completely transformed Eliza at the aristocratic gathering of an uh, however, we can see a completely transformed Eliza at the aristocratic gathering of an ambassador where she passes for a duchess tremendously. Her appearance, speech and mannerism are so impressive that the ambassador's wife reckons she must be a princess, while another elderly lady she says that Eliza talks like Queen Victoria. However, the internal change in Eliza is most significant. While her transformation from a flower girl to a lady who is fit for the aristocratic world is surprising, the internal change in Eliza must be subtle but no less important. Other characters in the play as well as the readers first come to realize this change when she reacted weirdly at the inquiry of Mr. Higgins about his slippers she actually felt unimportant and dejected when Mr. Higgins and Pickering enjoyed their triumph at the ambassador's party with each other without even without even acknowledging without even acknowledging Eliza's part in the event. Even though she was in the same room while they were talking, having arrived from the party, the incident touched at the very core of her sentiment and she perhaps for the first time realized an identity crisis. She was no more a flower selling girl from the gutter, but a lady with sheer beauty and manner with which she can easily earn, honor and invoke respect in others for her. She became so, uh, so aware of her self-esteem that she could dare to leave Mr. Higgins' house and take shelter at his mother's house. Later in the play, we see Eliza's argument with Mr. Higgins, which apparently shows that she does not want to go back to his house as a domestic help or someone who would remain content by managing his works. Thus, Eliza's transformation goes deeper and Banarsha shows this to be both positive and negative. On the positive side, her acceptance into higher society builds her sense of confidence and self-worth. She rebels and asserts herself against Henry Higgins' verbal abuse, such as his calling her squashed cabbage, as well as her careless assumption that she will always function to suit his convenience and go away as soon as she becomes inconvenient. Henry treats her as a thing. Eliza insists at the end on being treated as a human. On the negative side, however, the play points out that by transforming Eliza into a lady, Higgins has left her unfit for any role in society but marriage. She critics a culture, sorry, Banarsha critics a culture in which a woman's, a woman's ascent up the class ladder leaves her increasingly useless and dependent. As a working girl selling flowers, Eliza might have been very poor, but at least she could, she could earn her own keep. As a lady, she must marry and rely on a man to support her and her holding a job in that class would be unacceptable for a woman. So that's a transformation of Eliza throughout the whole play. Question number two, <clears throat> in what ways, uh, in what ways in Pickering is a more influential teacher than Higgins or compare a contrast between Higgins and Pickering. So you need to bring a comparison and contrast between Higgins and Pickering, or you need to show how Pickering is better teacher than Higgins. Colonel Pickering and Henry Higgins, two characters in the play Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, are two very different people. 
both are extremely intelligent and highly educated but each acts very differently colonel pickering in a, is a very polite very gentlemanly person while henry higgins is an extremely rude and mean spirited person both have very different attitudes not only towards eliza dolittle but also towards the other characters in pygmalion colonel pickering has a very positive attitude towards eliza dolittle pickering is very nice and well mannered towards eliza for example if we see the page number 599 of this textbook we find here after higgins is in another mean spirited rant towards eliza pickering says no no never mind crying a little miss dolittle you are doing very well and the lessons won't hurt i promise you i won't let him drag you round the room by your hair that pickering motivates her that line also shows that colonel pickering is a defensive of eliza colonel pickering is also a very calm person that makes him have very slow temper and he does not get frustrated very easily pickering is extremely encouraging he was able to keep eliza going throughout the harshness of henry higgins colonel pickering also kept a good relationship with the other characters his etiquette and overall gentlemanliness provided an atmosphere of peace that would have otherwise been demolished or tarnished by the arrogance and rudeness of henry higgins so henry higgins here had a very negative and very petty attitude towards eliza higgins is never polite and is always immensely rude towards eliza causing her to grow hateful and have suicidal thoughts higgins attitude not only rubs eliza the wrong way it also angers the other characters higgins mother even doesn't want to be around her at her at home higgins uh, belittles eliza frequently and is always looking down on her so how can we say pickering is more influential teacher so while both men contribute to eliza's transformation pickering is the key while higgins teaches her to speak this was only this was only an acquired skill just like learning to learning to dance in a fashionable way as she says her real education began with pickering calling her miss dolittle on her first day at wimpole street that she says that was the beginning of self respect for me throughout the experiment pickering treats her as something better than a, a scullery maid in contrast to higgins who continues to regard her as a low class flower girl to eliza being treated as a lady was essential to her belief that she could become just that as she says that difference between a lady and a flower girl is not how she behaves but how she is treated she rose to meet pickering's perception of her, of her and learned from him appropriate manners and behavior something she never could have learned from higgins without pickering she would have remained in her habits and self perception a number of the lower class while dressing and speaking beautifully so this is how we can find here the difference the compare and the contrast between higgins and pickering and this is how we can say that pickering is more influential teacher than higgins question number 3 pygmalion is a coming of age story of eliza as the play progresses eliza grows or is pushed from being a squashed or a squashed cabbage leaf of a girl to becoming a fully developed person with her own mind she comes to higgins as an ignorant unrefined girl with a spark of hope for bettering herself she's raw material in his hands dependent upon him for everything she must tell her she must tell her sorry he must tell her how to speak how to dress and how to behave pickering's kindness and respect show her that she's more than 
her poetry, physical appearance, and curbstone English imply. However, Eliza continues to submissively look at look to Higgins, her creator, for approval and for proof of her evolving identity as a lady. She does not trust that the transformation is more than superficial. Following her triumph at the ambassador's party, she begins to understand that Higgins is unable to see her as anything more than a squashed cabbage leaf, no matter she achieves. Something in her realizes that she is and deserves to be treated like a lady. In anger, she leaves breaking free of a creator. When she confronts him at his mother's home the next day, she has taken the final step in her transformation by moving beyond being Higgins' live doll. She's now a self-possessed woman. She tells Higgins, I can do without you. Don't think I can't. She knows she can now stand on her feet. The knowledge she acquired cannot be taken away. She can use it. She says, she tells Higgins, Oh, when I think of myself crawling under your feet and being trampled on and called names, when all the time I had only to lift up my finger to be as good as you, I could kick myself. At this point, even, Fig even Higgins realizes that Eliza has become a self-directed human being in mind and spirit. Even so, his descriptive terms of tower of strength and the consort battleship are less than flattering. Question number four. Banarsha, hi Banarsha highlights the pruderies, hypocrisies, hypocrisies and inconsistencies of higher class. Explain. Banasha includes members of all society, all social classes from the lowest, that is Eliza, to the servant, Mrs. Pierce, to the middle class, Doolittle, and to the general poor, like Ainsford Hills, to the upper class, Pickering and Higgins, or Higgin Higginses. The general sense is that class structure are rigid and should not be tempered with. So the example of Eliza's class mobility is most shocking. The issue of language is tied up in class quite closely. The fact that Higgins is able to identify where people were born by the accents is telling. British class and identity are very much tied up in their land and their birthplace. So it becomes hard to be socially mobile if your accent marks you as coming from a certain location. Question number five. Comment on the title of the play Pygmalion. So let's try to understand that why this title is given. That's a question here. Uh, this is not the answer for the question. Justify the title. It's we are commenting here how the title is being formed. Banarsha took the title of this play from an ancient Greek legend. According to this legend, Pygmalion was a sculptor who disliked women and did not see any reason to ever get married. Nevertheless, Pygmalion grew a lonely and decided to create an ivory sculpture, sculpture of a beautiful woman. This sculpture was so beautiful, in fact, that Pygmalion fell in love with it. So Banarsha's Pygmalion therefore reflects this legend and the title plays homage to its message. At the beginning of the play, Professor Henry Higgins has a negative views of women, just like Pygmalion. He believes that women are a damn nuisance, for example, who upset everything when they enter a man's life. Similarly, by receiving elocution lessons from Professor Higgins, the Funtix lessons, Eliza becomes a symbol of Pygmalion's sculpture. At the start of the play, Eliza is a flower girl, but by the end, she speaks as well as any duchess. She is indeed a creation of Professor Higgins, just like Pygmalion's beautiful sculpture. So that's the answer for the title. Question number six here, um, how are the characters of, the, of this play, they talk about the society they live in or 
how this play how does this play bring out the social differences how this play is a mirror of the society of that particular time so it has multiple questions pygmalion plays Play, sorry, Pygmalion play reflects the meaningless of the class distinction between the upper class and the lower class. This social issue relies upon the story of Eliza's turning point in her life with other characters in the play. Now, let's try to understand this question with another sub-question. So, let's have a discussion why, uh, from where the name of the play Pygmalion come from. So according to Pygmalion myths, there's a sculptor who falls in love with his marble statue. He creates a sculpture how he wants and he falls in love with it. Then he prays to gods. After that, uh, Aphrodite gives a soul to that sculpture, Galatea or Galatea. She comes to life and the story ends happily. Just like in this myth, the play plot goes through the transformation process of Eliza's situation in terms of dualism and intertwining of both the upper class and the lower class. Now, how it brings the social differences. The opening scene of the play is described in a rainy setting. Everybody escapes, uh, everybody escapes from heavy rain. <clears throat> so people are under the columns of the church. This is the only way of... I'm sorry. This is, the only, uh, this is the only way of bringing different classes to London Street. This is a flower girl whose name is Elijah, uh, Eliza, who bears a flower basket. She's in poor condition because her clothes are old and dirty. She wears a little sailor hat of black straw that has long been exposed to the dust. She's, she's no doubt as clean as she can afford to be. There's an emphasis on a poverty. The correlation between class and cleanliness is directly connected. The flower girl bumps into a boy named Freddy and her flowers fall into the mud. So she demands money from his mother. Then she tries to explain herself by saying, I'm a respectable girl. She repeats that throughout the play. She needs, to be she needs to defend herself all the time because she does not want to be misunderstood. So she explains that she is trying to earn her life selling these flowers because this is the only way for her to survive. Now, how does this flower girl struggle with the social differences? Then the note taker whose name is Higgins enters the scene. He complains about the flower girl speaking and he's rude to her, but she defends by saying, I have a right to be here if I like, same as you. In the play, the gentleman and the note taker introduce themselves one and another. Eliza learns that Higgins is a linguist, phonetician, and she keeps complaining. Higgins gives his all coins in the pocket before he leaves. Eliza goes to Higgins' house to take a speaking and manner course from him. In the following scenes, at first Higgins says she has no use because Eliza is just an experimental object for him. However, she says, did you tell him I come in a taxi? Looking at Mrs. Pierce, the maid, the housekeeper. She wants to prove herself by implying the taxi. She means that she is like a lady. Being an upper class lady means wearing luxury clothes, having pieces of jewelry and going by taxi. Now, what does this Pygmalion emphasize about the social classes? This play intertwines the, intervenes the upper class to the lower class and the lower class to the upper class. She wants a better life selling flowers in a flower shop. She's ready to pay for lessons. The gentleman whose name is Pickering wants Higgins to be tutor for Eliza. Higgins says, Take all, take all her clothes and burn them. Her clothes are symbolic, reflecting her identity. But burning her clothes means that she will not be able to wear her clothes again and she will become the same Eliza because her innocence is going to burn. So Higgins asks if she has family. She says, yes. She says, I aren't got any parents. They told me I was big enough to earn my own living. 
this is another fact in the lower class however mr do a little who is eliza's father comes to get money from higgins pickerings ask have you no morals have you no morals mr do a little her father says i can't afford them because even a widow can get money from five different charities but he cannot get money from them so banarsha criticized injustice in society showing him as an undeserving man so friends in this manner the characters of the play pygmalion mirror the society of that time they lived in as well as the social differences so this is one of the most significant plays that criticize the polarization in society so this is how i have solved the questions answers so i wish you good luck for the forthcoming examination thank you so much